Hi, my name is Thomas Lossemeyer, founder and president of Visualign, a consulting firm specializing on data visualization to improve business performance. In this little animation, we will look at a simplified business where customers buy products. Some customers obviously will buy more products than others. Some customers will negotiate deeper discounts than others, which all affects the revenue picture. On the cost side, clearly some products cost more to make than others. And some customers cost more to serve than others. So if we look at the profit, which is essentially revenue minus cost, we will see a very unique combination between customers and products. Some of them are more profitable than others, and some of them lead to profits, and unfortunately a few of them tend to lead to losses. Let's now look at the profits for only the customers. By summing across all the products that this particular customer has bought, and then sorting the resulting values by decreasing profitability. This picture already shows us who the most profitable customers are and who the customers in the red, the so-called profit takers are. We can furthermore aggregate this information and plot the cumulative profit per customers in this case to obtain the so-called whale curve, which shows the same information in a slightly different format. Note, by the way, that we can aggregate this two-dimensional space of customers and products also in the, towards the product dimension by simply aggregating over all the customers who bought each particular product, then sorting and doing the cumulative plot for the so-called product whale curve. What are these whale curves actually telling us now? One of the insights is that a small percentage of your, say, best customers contributes a disproportionate amount to the final result. This is similar to the Pareto distribution, only that in this case, the top 20% can actually yield more than 100% of the final result, say 130% in this case. Next, you have a middle range of so-called break-even customers that are all still in positive territory, but overall they contribute a fairly small uh, amount of the final result. And unfortunately, near the bottom or the right end, you have customers who create losses, who are profit takers, and they diminish the final result, which is the main difference to the Pareto curve, which cannot slope down, it's for non-negative values only. But since profit can unfortunately be negative, you can have the curve sloping down on the right. When you do gap analysis to determine the full potential for your business in an improvement project, you will find a couple of things. One is you will want to improve the profits that you do with your best customers or products. In other words, you want to lift the entire curve up. Second, you want to flatten the curve out to the right, ensuring that of all the remaining customers, as many of them as possible are in the positive break-even territory. And if you can't avoid it, at least you want to make sure that those profit takers that the downslope is minimized. All of these three, as you can see, contribute to the potential, which is far higher than just the top of the original whale curve. In summary, customer profitability analysis is a, an important technique that can improve your business performance, and the whale curve is a key instrument to visualize your most or least profitable customers and products. I'm partnering with a company that has a great solution for this, that incorporates this technique and many others. It's called Rapid Business Modeling. And for more information, please visit their website at rapidbusinessmodeling.com.